This is a list of the five serial killers with the highest victim counts. Number five, Daniel Camargo Barbosa. Victim count 72, up to 180 possible. Colombia-born Daniel Camargo Barbosa's first offense occurred on the 10th of April, 1964, when he learned that the woman he was in love with was not a virgin, so he raped her. Jailed, Camargo decided that any of his future victims would not live to tell their tale. On the 3rd of May, 1974, Camargo was arrested at Barranquilla, Colombia, as he tried to bury the body of a nine-year-old girl he has raped and murdered. He was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment, which was reduced to 25 on appeal. He was sent to the prison on the volcanic island of Gorgona on the 24th of December, 1977. No one had ever escaped from the island until Camargo did, in a canoe in November 1984. The press reported that sharks had eaten Camargo, but unfortunately he had lived and appeared in Ecuador, where he began a new career of rape and murder. He was nicknamed the Beast of the Andes, and when he was arrested, confessed to the murder of 71 girls. In the port of Guayaguil, 55 young girls disappeared in the space of just 14 months. When the bodies of many victims were found, they had been brutalized with a blunt instrument and a machete. Sweet wrappers were found at three of the murder scenes and police guessed that the killer was luring the children with sweets. In June 1988, the corpse of 12-year-old girl Gloria Andino was found on the edge of a mangrove swamp. Examination of the body led to the discovery of a sweet wrapper in her hand. On the wrapper was a smudged fingerprint which was identified as belonging to Camargo. A short time afterwards, a motorcycle policeman arrested a man behaving suspiciously in the vicinity of where Gloria Andino had lived. The man turned out to be Camargo and in his pocket was a picture of one of the missing girls. Number 4. Mikhail Popkov Victim count 78, 83 or more possible. Mikhail Popkov was born on March 7, 1964 in Russia. He worked as a policeman before later becoming a security guard. He has a wife and a daughter. His wife was also in the police and provided an alibi for Popkov's serials several times. It has been speculated that Popkov had been targeting women who resembled his reportedly alcoholic mother who abused him in his childhood. From 1992 to 2000, Popkov is suspected of murdering up to 29 women. He would pick up slightly intoxicated women who were just leaving bars or parties, using his police car and uniform to gain the victim's trust in some of the murders. Popkov would then drive them to the forest where he raped and murdered them. The victims were reportedly axed, stabbed, or strangled to death. One of the victims was decapitated and another's heart had been ripped out. He would rape the victims after they were deceased as well. One of Popko's victims survived his attack and later identified a photo of him. However, police chose to believe Popko's wife, who had provided an alibi. Popko claimed he stopped killing when he became impotent and attracted syphilis. He had been labeled the Wednesday murderer by police referring to the day when many of the bodies were found. He was arrested on June 23, 2012 when he went to Vladivostok to buy a car after having his DNA sampled, along with 3,500 other police officers. He was suspected of killing at least 29 women, 25 of whom were aged 19 to 28 and 4 who were aged 35 to 40. All of the victims were residents of Angarsk, Irkutsk Oblast. He confessed to 25 murders and was later charged with them on October 31st, 2013. At the questioning, Mikhail Popkov said he stopped after a sexually transmitted disease left him impotent and he lost the will to rape and kill. Number 3. Javed Iqbal. Victim count 100 young boys. Born 1961 in Pakistan, he was a serial killer who murdered some 100 boys. His case attracted international attention, not only because he was one of the deadliest serial killers in history, but because upon his conviction, he was sentenced to die in a manner similar to that in which he had tortured and killed his victims. Little is known about Iqbal's early life. 
although complaints of sodomy were lodged against him in 1985 and 1990. He was never convicted of any of the charges. Iqbal surrendered to Pakistani authorities in 1999 after confessing to 100 murders during a six-month period. According to his confession, he had lured the boys, mostly beggars and street children, between the ages of 6 and 16 to his home in Lahore, where he sexually assaulted them, strangled them to death, dismembered their bodies, and disposed of the pieces in a vat of acid. Iqbal claimed that his crimes were undertaken as an act of revenge against the police, who he said had assaulted him following an arrest. Iqbal kept detailed records of his victims, including their names, ages, and photographs. Although he later denied his guilt, Iqbal was given 100 death sentences. The court also ordered that he be executed with the same chain he used to strangle his victims and that his body be cut into 100 pieces and dissolved in acid. Before the execution could take place, however, Iqbal and a young accomplice who also had been convicted were found dead in the prison cells. Despite indicators of foul play, their deaths were officially ruled suicides. Number 2. Pedro Alonso Lopez Victim count 110 proven, possible 300 or more. He was born on the 8th of October 1948 and is a Colombian serial killer and a child killer who was sentenced for killing 110 girls, but who claimed to have raped and killed more than 300 girls across Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. Aside from unsighted local accounts, Lopez's crimes first received international attention from an interview conducted by Ron Leitner a longtime freelance photojournalist who reported interviewing Lopez in his Ambato prison cell in 1980. According to Leitner's story, Lopez became known as the Monster of the Andes in 1980, when he led police to 53 graves in Ecuador. The victims were all girls 12 years of age. In 1983, he was found guilty of the murder of 110 girls in Ecuador. He further confessed to an additional 240 murders in Peru and Colombia. Despite being believed to be one of the most prolific serial killers of the 20th century, he was released in the light, late 1990s and his whereabouts are unknown. Number 1. Luis Garavito Victim count 138 proven, over 300 possible. In full, Luis Alfredo Garavito, born January 25, 1957, Geneva, Colombia, Colombian serial killer who was convicted of murdering 189 boys in the 1990s. Many of Garavito's victims lived in poor neighborhoods apart from their families who could not afford to support them, leading observers to speculate that their disappearances were ignored or overlooked. Garavito, the eldest of seven children, was raised in Western Colombia. He attended school for only a few years and endured a difficult childhood, suffering abuse by his father and several neighbors. During his killing spree in the 1990s, many Colombian boys, most between the ages of 8 and 16, were reported missing or found dead, their bodies brutally mutilated and bearing signs of sexual assault. In 1997, the discovery of a graveyard containing the bodies of 36 boys near the city of Pereira prompted a nationwide manhunt. In 1999, Garavito, then a drifter with a long history of alcohol problems and psychiatric illness, was arrested on suspicion of sexually assaulting a young boy. He eventually confessed to murdering 140 boys and he was eventually given 835 year prison sentence for the murder of 189 people. He had gained access to his victims, many of whom were unattended children of street vendors, by using disguises, most often posing as a monk or a priest. One of his many nicknames in the Colombian media was El Cora. He lured the boys with promises of money or a drink. Garavito traveled widely during the killing spree, committing murders in at least 11 of Colombia's 32 departments. He also was suspected of murders in Ecuador. Thank you for watching and make sure to share, like and subscribe.